The humid air of the Amazon rainforest in January 2026 is thick with more than just tropical moisture. It is heavy with the scent of jet fuel and the palpable tension of a regional security crisis. As geopolitical shifts in Caracas prompt a massive military mobilization along the northern frontiers, the international community has focused its attention on a specific patch of land, the border between the Brazilian state of Roraima and Venezuela. For the first time since the mid-20th century, the possibility of a high-intensity aerial confrontation in South America has shifted from the realm of academic theory to tactical reality. At the center of this strategic standoff are two of the most capable fighter aircraft in the Southern Hemisphere, the Brazilian F-39 Gripen E and the Venezuelan Su-30 Mk-2 Flanker G. This confrontation represents not just a clash of nations, but a fundamental test of two opposing military philosophies. The reliance on massive, long-range heavy fighters versus the adoption of highly integrated, software-driven platforms. The Venezuelan Air Force entered 2026 with a fleet that, on paper, remains formidable. The Su-30 Mk-2 is a twin-engine heavyweight fighter designed for air superiority, capable of carrying a massive payload and performing maneuvers that defy conventional physics. However, the reality of the Venezuelan fleet is clouded by years of economic instability and international sanctions. Reports from defense analysts in early 2026 suggest that while Caracas maintains approximately 24 of these Russian-made airframes, the operational readiness rate has plummeted. The lack of spare parts from Russia, which has prioritized its own domestic requirements during its ongoing conflicts, has turned much of the Venezuelan fleet into grounded assets. In contrast, the Brazilian Air Force has spent the last five years meticulously integrating the F-39 Gripen E into its inventory. With more than 15 airframes active as of January 2026 and a localized production line at the Embraer facility in Gavião Peixoto, the Brazilian fleet represents the cutting edge of readiness and technological reliability. When analyzing a potential engagement over the dense canopy of the Amazon, the primary factor is not the number of engines or the maximum speed, but the ability to see without being seen. The Su-30 Mk-2 relies on the N-001 VEP radar, a powerful but aging passive electronically scanned array system. While it possesses a significant detection range against large targets, it suffers from a high radar cross-section. The Flanker is a massive aircraft, making it easy for modern sensors to track from hundreds of kilometers away. The Gripen E, however, was designed with a philosophy of electronic stealth. It features a significantly smaller physical profile and utilizes the Raven ES-05 active electronically scanned array radar. This system allows the Gripen to scan the skies with extreme precision while minimizing the electronic emissions that would give away its position. In the electronic warfare environment of 2026, the Gripen's ability to manipulate the electromagnetic spectrum means it can effectively blind the older Russian sensors, turning the Su-30 into a blind giant in a room full of invisible predators. The most decisive factor in this simulation is the integration of the Meteor missile, a weapon system that has fundamentally redefined aerial combat. By early 2026, the Brazilian Air Force has successfully operationalized the Meteor across its Gripen fleet. Unlike traditional air-to-air -air missiles that rely on rocket motors, which burn out shortly after launch, the Meteor uses a throttleable ducted rocket, commonly known as a ramjet. This allows the missile to maintain high speeds throughout its entire flight path, providing it with a no-escape zone several times larger than that of the R-77 or R-27 missiles carried by the Venezuelan Su-30s. In a hypothetical engagement over Roraima, a Gripen pilot could launch a meteor from a distance exceeding 150 kilometers. 
the Venezuelan pilot, limited by older radar technology and less efficient missile propulsion, would likely be destroyed before their own systems could even provide a reliable firing solution. The meteor does not just outrange the opponent, it ensures that the opponent has no kinetic energy left to maneuver out of the way. Furthermore, the Brazilian advantage is multiplied by its system of systems approach. The F-39 Gripen does not operate in a vacuum. It is part of an integrated network that includes the E-99M airborne early warning and control aircraft. Through the Link BR-2 data link, a sovereign Brazilian communication protocol, the E-99M can detect Venezuelan movements from high altitudes and transmit that data directly to the Gripen's cockpit without the fighter ever needing to turn on its own radar. This silent hunting capability is a luxury the Venezuelan Air Force does not possess. Without a modern, functional airborne warning fleet, Venezuelan pilots must rely on ground-based radar stations, which are notoriously difficult to maintain and operate effectively in the mountainous and forested terrain of the border region. The result is a massive information asymmetry where the Brazilian side possesses a comprehensive view of the battlefield, while the Venezuelan side struggles to piece together a coherent tactical picture. The economic dimensions of this military standoff are equally telling. Brazil has invested billions of Brazilian reais into the Gripen program, with the total contract value estimated at over 5 billion 400 million United States dollars. This investment was not merely for the acquisition of aircraft, but for the transfer of technology that allows Embraer to provide domestic support. In 2026, if a Gripen requires a critical software update or a structural repair, the solution is found within Brazilian borders. Conversely, the Venezuelan military must navigate a crumbling logistical chain and an increasingly isolated Russian defense industry. The cost of maintaining a single Su-30 has skyrocketed, and with the Venezuelan Bolivar facing extreme volatility, the ability to sustain a high-tempo air campaign is virtually non-existent. This industrial resilience provides Brazil with a strategic depth that cannot be matched by its northern neighbor. Another critical element often overlooked is the human factor and training quality. The Brazilian Air Force has participated in numerous international exercises, such as Cruzex, which emphasize NATO standard tactics and complex multi-domain operations. By 2026, Gripen pilots have undergone thousands of hours of simulation and flight time focused specifically on utilizing the aircraft's advanced human-machine interface. This interface uses artificial intelligence to filter out unnecessary information, allowing the pilot to act as a mission commander rather than just a flight technician. On the other side, Venezuelan pilots have seen their flight hours drastically reduced due to fuel shortages and airframe fatigue. In a high-stress aerial dogfight, the cognitive load on a Su-30 pilot is significantly higher than that of a Gripen pilot, leading to a higher probability of tactical errors. In the final analysis, the potential for a regional conflict between Brazil and Venezuela in 2026 serves as a powerful validation of Brazil's long-term defense planning. While the Su-30 Mk2 remains a symbol of raw 20th century aerial power, the F-39 Gripen E represents the 21st century reality of networked precision warfare. The presence of the Gripen along the northern border acts as a profound deterrent. It sends a clear message to any regional actor that the era of uncontested flanker dominance has ended. The technological edge provided by active electronically scanned array radars, the Meteor missile, and the Link BR2 system ensures that Brazil can protect its sovereignty without necessarily firing a shot. The goal of the Brazilian military is not to win a war in the Amazon, but to make the cost of starting one so high that peace remains the only logical option. As the sun sets over the Rorama border in early 2026, the silent patrol of the Gripen E serves as a reminder that in modern warfare, the most technologically integrated player usually holds the sky. <laughs>